Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited that you're here because if you guys remember from my last video, I showed you guys what I picked up from the Goodwill and today I'm gonna show you what I do with them. You guys are not gonna believe that these came from the Goodwill. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay guys, starting off with these topiaries. Now when I saw them in Goodwill, I was horrified. Um, you can tell that somebody made these. I don't know like where, you know, how they made them, but I can, I could tell that somebody hand made at least the top part of it, obviously. So anyway, all I had to do was take my pliers. Now they glued these in there pretty good, um, but I could see like where they painted the styrofoam ball and stuff. So anyway, I just carefully pulled out all of the florals from the bottom part and the top part, making sure sure to remove any wire that was left behind and then I do the exact same thing to the second one. Next I'm going to take my Moss Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint both of those. That way once I lay down my greenery, if you can see through any of the greenery, then you won't see that black color. Now to protect the base of these, I took some painter's tape and I just wrapped that around the bottom part because next we're going to spray paint these white and I really did not want any spray paint getting on the middle part of these. So I tried to spray paint these a number of different ways and the easiest way that I found to do it was just to hold it out like this and spray like I think it's six to eight inches away. Eight to 12 inches away. So I just spray like this. Twist it, spray, 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 like that. So hope this helps. Oh, and you guys wanna see a bump shot? Much smaller than I was with Izzy because I lost a lot of weight. If you guys want any info in the description box, you'll see all of my links. Friend request me on Facebook on my personal page. You'll see my personal Facebook page. Send me a message that says ketones and I would love to help you guys get started on your health and wellness journey. It's a new passion of mine. I feel amazing and I would love to share that with you guys. So anyway, let's jump back in. Once the spray paint was dry, now it's the fun part. I take an old chip brush and because you guys uh, bought out all of my mini chip brushes a while ago, years ago, I started using those mini chip brushes you guys see that I have because thankfully I stocked up on them. And then a bunch of crafters started using them. All you guys bought them up and now nobody can find them anywhere, but that's okay. I just use what I can, you guys, no big deal. But because this was a bigger piece anyway, when it's a bigger piece, I like to use the bigger chip brushes just because it covers more area. So when I am dry brushing, um, I go a little heavy handed. If you do not like dry brushing, totally skip this part. Or if you like it a little bit lighter, then just go a little lighter handed. But me personally, I like that rustic, old looking chippy look. So that is why I personally go a little more heavy handed. I repeat the same thing on the second one and then I'm going to take these boxwoods from Walmart. I believe they were a dollar thirty something a piece. Don't quote me on that but I know they were a dollar something and I did end up picking up 10 bunches because I wasn't exactly sure how many I would need. I only ended up using eight and what I did was I'm going to show you guys here in a minute because through trial and error, this was a lot of work, but I figured out how to um, cut your work time down just because I have ADHD and I don't have the best patience. So at first, you guys, I almost was like, oh my goodness, I cannot do this. This is too much. I'm going to lose my mind. But I just threw on some jams and I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to do this. So you're going to pick them all off first. Then you're going to cut off the bottom part 
of each individual little flower, if you will. And these particular ones had four sections, so I cut them in half, and then that is what I used to cover this. Now, I am just going to show you guys here that at first I started gluing them individually, and once again, <laughs> I'm like, there has to be a quicker way. So that's when I started from scratch with the second one. And I'm going to show you guys the easiest and quickest way to do it. Um, like I said, I just explained it. But here in a minute, I'm actually going to show you the quickest process. So obviously you take all the flowers off the pick and then you're going to take a very sharp pair of scissors, cut all of the bottoms off of them and then cut them in half like I said. Once you're done cutting all of them, so I used four per one. Then I took an, the end of a skewer and I just poked holes all the way around this ball. That way I had essentially hair plugs. The entire time I was doing this, you guys, I'm like, good lord, I feel like I'm like plugging somebody's hair. <laughs> anyway, so the quickest way is to... Um, obviously those two steps and then once you have all of your holes then you're going to do sections at a time so rather than glue one piece at a time you're going to um, dab some glue on several of your holes at a time and then you're going to plug each hole with your little half then once you're done make sure that you fill in any of the gaps that you can see through and then next i take the painter's tape the painters tape off the bottom now i always set up a camera for tiktok and instagram if you guys are not following me over there it's all things crafty too i share a lot more of my personal life over there and i would love for you to join me so this is like essentially what i do over there with the reels i set up a different angle and i um, post that kind of stuff so if you guys want to check that out my links are also in the description box but anyway um, the next step is to take some glue and glue down some spanish moss and then to tie all of this together i just i just took some more of that greenery and randomly glued that down on top of the moss Next, I took these string lights from Dollar Tree, two packs of them, and these are the ones with the greenery on them. So I put two batteries in each, and then once I knew that they were all lit up, you always want to check your lights before you go gluing it down to your project. Um, now, I should have glued the other side of this battery pack, but I did it for the next one. Um, because you want to make sure that you can change your batteries so just make sure that if you find these and you end up doing this project that you glue your battery pack on the right way but i glue that down to the back and then i just glue the wire all the way up the back that way it's nice and hidden and then once that was done i kind of wanted this to tie all together once again so that you couldn't see it so i did paint that first part white to blend in with the little um, pot part of it. Then I stuck some rain or some Spanish moss on top of the wire. That way you couldn't see that part. And then going up towards the top, I took some of my truffle Waverly chalk paint and I also painted that wire to blend that in. Now the string of lights weren't very long and I could have added another battery pack but it would have been super bulky at the back so i just decided to stick with the one strand and i just wrapped it around as best as i could making sure that the majority of the lights were in the front now this did wrap around three times and i just made sure that that last loop was in the front Now I almost stopped here, but I felt that it needed a little embellishment at the bottom. So all I did was take this ribbon that I got from Walmart back at Christmas time. It's just like a burlap color with black trim. 
I measure that out and then I stick it in the back of the battery pack, kind of like a loop, and then I glue that down in place. And I do that for both of them. And then to finish this off, I take a thinner piece of buffalo check ribbon. I tie that down in the middle of the burlap ribbon. And then here I'm gonna show you guys how to make a finger bow. It's so easy. I've been doing this on my channel since I started on YouTube. A lot of other people do it as well. Um, I get a lot of questions about my finger bow. I also put it in a video of 11 different bows. So if you guys have trouble making bows, I will leave that in the cards in the right hand corner. Now I'm not very great at explaining <laughs> how to do this finger bow, but I did slow this down for you. I also got it very close for you so that you could see what I was doing. And if you need to go back and watch it over and over, feel free to do that or in the right hand corner there should be three dots and you can further slow it down once i was done making two bows then i just glued that to the middle on each and literally you guys that was it i absolutely love the way that these turned out um, sometimes when I make projects, like I can't believe that I actually made them. So I can't believe it started out to be those horrendous looking topiaries. And this is what we came up with. So per usual, let me know down in the comments what you guys think of it. The thing I love most about topiaries is there are so many design options for them. You could put them on your porch, you could put them in your home for farmhouse decor. There is just so many different options and they look amazing in each spot. Okay guys, right off the get go, I could not wait to get this thing into my craft room and get going with it. Now, originally the idea that I had in my head is not at all what this turned out to be. So originally I had a totally different color and pattern in mind. So to start off, I take off the label holders. Now, unfortunately one of them, somebody really stripped the screw. I mean, it was super stripped. There was nothing I could do with it. So I just left it there and waited for my husband. He ended up getting it. Don't ask me how because I was inside with the kids. But anyway, he did get it off for me. So the biggest thing with Goodwill finds is you have to make sure you wipe them down really, really good because you just don't know where they've been, who's been touching them, and that oh God awful smell. Whew. But once I had a coat of paint, it was all good. So I started off in the little mail part. I believe this is like where you um, put envelopes and stuff. So that was really tricky to paint. I'm not going to lie. For some reason this day, my spray paint just did not want to work. I don't know if in the move it got ruined. Um, I don't know. Maybe it was just too hot that day. It was almost 100 degrees. So I think that was mostly the problem. But anyway, nonetheless, I did at first give the front of this a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I then realized that I get a hundred questions about my kitchen all the time. You guys absolutely love what I did in there. So I figured that I show you exactly what I did. So I painted the cabinets with, it's called soft green, but this Waverly celery color is the perfect color. I could not believe how great it matched. So I did go ahead and paint the entire thing except for the mail slots and the front of the drawers with that celery Waverly paint. I also wanted to mention that because I'm super impatient, I dried in between coats and then I made sure to give this another good coat. That way it had full coverage. 
and I don't know what happened to the footage, but I did put one screw back in each of the holes. That way I had something to grab onto the drawers and pull those out. That way I could paint the sides of the drawers as well. So once that was all dry, I took those screws out and then I tape off all of my sections. That way when we go to do the next part, none of it gets on the green part of this piece. And clearly, I need a new blade. But I thought it was so funny because half of a piece of this frog tape was the perfect amount for these little cross pieces. So anyway, that was just a little random fact. Um, once I had all of this taped off and like I make sure that none of the white part is showing. Then I take my Chalk Couture Transfer, the exact same farmhouse tile that I used in my kitchen, and I'm just kind of figuring out how I want the placement of the farmhouse tiles. I also wanted to show you guys, if you guys drink Red Bull, please stop, it's terrible for you. Um, keto Up is actually good for you. It puts your body into ketosis instantly, and it burns your fat for fuel, if you guys want any info, um, go down in the description box, find my Facebook link to my personal page, friend request me, and then shoot me a message that says ketones. So anyway, once I figured out the placement, then I just lay down my farmhouse tile, and you can tell that this thing got really good use. I probably used this exact transfer probably 20 times. This will probably be like the 21st. I'm not exactly too sure, but they do last a pretty good while. And I will have the link to this farmhouse tile as well as a squeegee and black paste all in a cart link in the description box for you. So once I got done the two at the bottom, I wanted to protect my piece once again, making sure that the black paste doesn't get anywhere else so i just kind of lay my backing sheet down and then i transfer on the rest of the drawer fronts from there that way i know that i'm not going to make a huge mess I also wanted to address or mention really quick that, because I already know somebody's going to come for me in the comments, and it's all good. I know that I said that I'm, I said that I'm not going to use Chalk Couture as much anymore. Um, I didn't say that I would never use it. I'm just not using it as much. Um, it literally was in every single project um, a few months back, so I'm really enjoying um, my creative side back. And um, so I did just want to mention that. Don't come for me in the comments. I'm still going to use Chalk Couture, even though it's not going to be at the forefront of everything anymore. Obviously, I put all my label holders back on, and then I really wanted those to pop off of the piece, so I took my Rub and Buff Antique Gold, and I took a brush, and I kind of dabbed it on my brush, and then made sure to wipe off the excess Rub and Buff, and then I lightly went over the label holders just to give them that bronzy, antique -y look. I love the way that it looks against that green color and the farmhouse tile pattern. Pattern. So you guys can let me know in the comments, would you have left the label holders alone or would you have used the rub and buff as well? Next, once again, I'm going to tape this off because originally I was going to leave the male cubby part that white and just give it another coat of white. And then I realized that it would actually look amazing if I painted it black. So I just tape that part off and to be quite honest, I taped the whole front of this off after this part. I started painting it and I was like, no, forget this. I'm taking this outside. It was evening by this time, so it was a lot cooler. And I was just like, forget this. I am spray painting these cubby holes because trust me, you guys, they are really, really not easy to paint. So after that, look how amazing it looks, you guys. I absolutely love this so much. I am so thrilled that I decided to make it match my kitchen. 
let me know down in the comments if you guys would have chose different colors or a different pattern for this or would you have made it exactly how I did. guys are enjoying my content don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well i have a big goal of getting to 100k by the time i have my baby boy in october and i cannot do it without your guys help so for this one this one is so easy you can do this with your eyes closed all i did was took this little palette sign that i got for two dollars i sanded off the front image and then I love that natural grain look so much that I just left it alone and took this Dollar Tree Farm Fresh stencil. And I was just trying to show you that you could do this many different ways. You could trace it and then go over it with a black paint pen. Or you could do this technique that I chose to do, take a stippling brush or a stencil brush, and then you want to use as little paint as possible and you just dab all the way around your stencil until you're done and look how gorgeous this turned out you guys it literally took me five minutes it is real wood it looks so farmhousey and i love the way that it looks on top of this mail center This one was once again so easy. I probably wouldn't even call it a DIY, probably just a repair, but I take a 14 millimeter unfinished wood bead. I stick that on the end of my skewer and then paint that with my Dixie Belle caviar chalk paint. Next, I just reassemble the flower sifter and I take some hot glue and glue that bead right on the edge. And then I also wanted to put some extra rust on here. So I took some Mod Podge. I just wanted to show you guys this technique and some ground cinnamon. And I just sprinkled that on and shook off the excess. Now, because this piece already had rust, it didn't look right. So I skipped out on doing any more, but I did just wanna show you guys that technique and I literally love this thing so much. It's antique -y. It reminds me so much of farmhouse decor. I love it, and let me know what you guys think. Would you have left it alone, or would you have added the bead as well? Okay, friends, and last but not least, the doll chair. If you guys are still here, leave a heart in the comments. That way I can know that you guys stuck around for the entire video. I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. But I'm doing this little chair for my daughter. She just recently finished kindergarten, and she got a doll for graduating. So I wanted to make her a little doll chair. Now, unfortunately, I should have grabbed the other one because I wanted wanted to make my other daughter the exact same one but I kind of was thinking that it would be like a special gift for my six-year-old um, but she ended up wanting her sister to have one and when I went back you guys it wasn't there so anyway it's okay Sophie is a good sister she said she would share no big deal and when I see another one I'll pick it up so I painted this with two really good coats of the new Waverly chalk paint. It's called Pink Clouds. This is actually pretty much the color of my girl's room. So I thought that it would match really well. And then my daughter named her doll Rosa. So I went to my computer, I printed the name out, and then I traced it on with my graphite paper. Next, I went over it with my white paint pen. And then I took these Boho Rub-On Transfers from Dollar Tree because their room is boho so I thought that it would match really really good 
and I took the little feathers and I transferred those onto the top. Now the trick with these is you want to make sure that you're creating friction so that way the glue activates and sticks to your surface. And then before you go pulling that plastic up, make sure you check to see if your rub-on transfer connected to your surface, if that makes sense. So I just kind of cut out some random stuff. There was no um, particular design I was going for. I was just trying to think of what a little girl would like. Now this is once again out of my comfort zone. I'm more of like the farmhouse decor kind of girl. So I did my best. My, da my daughter absolutely loved the way that it turned out. So I'm glad that I did this for her because I feel that it's something that she'll remember forever. Once I was done with the embellishments, then I went in once again with my big chip brush and I just dry brushed some more of, I don't know what that color is, you guys. I'll have to check for you, but it's part of the new Waverly collection. I believe there's five new colors and these two are it. I also put some shadows on the wording. I don't know what happened to that footage. And then last but not least, I sprayed it down with some clear glaze. You know, kids, spills, all kinds of crazy stuff. I wanted to make sure that this chair was protected. And that was it, you guys. I love the way that it turned out for her. Um, again, she loved it so much. She must have thanked me 10 times and that is really why I do it. So anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow. And with all that being said, don't forget to um, check out the information in the description box if you guys want any info on ketones. Friend, request me on my personal Facebook page. Send me a message that says ketones and I will get with you guys. Also, let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite, one through five, which flip was your favorite, I should say. And as always, you guys, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. You are worthy. You literally can do anything you put your mind to because you are so strong and I know that you're capable of anything. So with all that being said, you guys, I hope you have an amazing week. I'll catch you guys here at the end of the week for some type of haul and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.